Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's about 4.30 on April 4th, 2013. By the way, we're getting close to tax day. So just want to remind you, don't forget anything and look long and hard for those legitimate tax deductions. Um, I personally think that uh, election day every four years or every two years ought to be on April 16th. But uh, <laughs> that, that would certainly make things interesting, wouldn't it? Look, before we take a look at the chart, I want to remind you, as always, that the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in the video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you should be making investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. And I'll add here, also suitable for your personal risk tolerance. Finally, uh, I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts. Okay, looking at a 15-minute chart, we are um, examining here uh, a couple of breakdowns and what ensued after each breakdown. There are a number of channels in this image that we're looking at right here. And as a matter of fact, let's zoom out just a little bit more. To begin with, just to recap, we had our uh, channel that was between these two red lines that was working uh, for almost, well, right at about a month and a half. We jumped into that channel on January 2nd, right here on the first day of trading for 2013. We stayed in that channel for weeks. Um, what, one, two, three, four, five, about, a little bit more than six weeks. And we fell out of it only to uh, consolidate to make another upwards move that really ended up being pretty much an extended back test on this lower line. So what what is a back test? Well, a back test, and I for the life of me, I can't tell you why back tests seem so often to work in channels. They make good sense when you're dealing with with a horizontal line, but when it comes to a channel, it's just this weird thing. It's just once you break underneath that channel, the line tends to get back tested and then the uh, whatever you're charting has a very difficult time. I'm not going to say impossible time because that's just not not true. But the the majority of the time, the significant majority of the time, once you break that rising channel, you can't get back into it. At least not without a tremendous amount of effort. However, that doesn't mean that you won't come back to it as we did here back to it again and then just kind of wind around it for a while okay so what happened is we broke this red channel we fell out of that to a fairly significant degree then started the back test in this blue channel that was rising at a very aggressive rate could not get into this red channel fell down for about a week long trip in this little orange channel then we came out of it now on in a much lazier less aggressive angle heading up but then we have now spent two days underneath this uh, bottom line that broke yesterday now I've talked a good bit about what is a technically significant break. Well, since we're up here in the 1560s, uh, let, let's just call it uh, yeah, fif let's call it 1500 for that matter. That would mean a one percent break would be undeniably technically significant. What we've experienced for the past two days is sort of borderline. 
I, th- I think the action that we saw after the strong open this morning lends, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Lends um, credence to this line right here now having been turned from support to resistance. But we still never really came down the, the the lowest we got was fifteen was roughly fifteen fifty, and that still was only about 067 uh, percent of a move underneath this line. So it's a little bit yeah a little I'm a little bit wishy washy about saying yeah with it, this this uh, this upwards move is done. because we haven't reached that technical significance. And as I've said over the past week or so, that makes it really kind of dicey up here because if we're looking at patterns that just have a 1.5 or 2% um, uh, minimum target, then we don't really get much out of those when we're also looking for at least a 1% move in order to validate a breakout or a breakdown. So this has made this kind of tough sledding. But what I can tell you is that it's pretty clear from looking at this chart that that aggressive move up is now starting to slip. And it it almost looks like we may be starting to round over here. So we'll just keep an eye on things as they continue to develop. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Today we got that back test early on, got turned back a couple times, but it wouldn't surprise me if we come back for a few more tags on this line. That just would not be um, out of the ordinary. And additionally, as, as we've stated before, I think the real line we need to watch, and unfortunately it's not a perfect line, Let's just move it right here. Let's let's kind of average things out a little bit. This line right here, this yellow line, I think is probably the one that's going to uh, uh, be be the most important line to watch as far as signals go. Remind you, with this move that we made this week, what? Come on. There we go. Over 1570. Um, that satisfies all of the targets that we had from various patterns. We had a target from this sort of truncated uh, inverted head and shoulders that's um, in this gray oval. That had a target of about 1562. We made that. Then we had this smaller inverted head and shoulders right here. There it is. Just for the fun of it, let's put a gray marker on that. That had a target that was also met. So there's no outstanding minimum bullish targets at this point in time. That's, that is not to say that this market cannot move up higher. But what it is saying If it does, it does. We just can't look at the chart and say, here's why I'm expecting the market to move up higher. Once we hit the 1362, I'm excuse me, 1562, 1565, there's no, did I say 13 earlier? I may have. Pardon me if I did. I haven't talked about anything in the 1300s, so if I said 13-something, it should have been 15. But there is no reason now to look for a a uh, anything specifically higher than that 1562 level that was um, put on the map by both this inverted head and shoulders, this small one, as well as by this significantly larger pattern that formed throughout the uh, fall and late winter of 2013. Or rather, late fall, early winter. Man, I'm a wreck today. So, going forward, we still look at this line 
and we expect it to be resistance. If the S&P gets up over that, bully for it, um, because we still have not gotten more than 1% underneath it. But this looks to be still like a rolling over process. As you can see here again, the strong move right here, if, if we had extended that on up, then we should have been around 1620 by now, and we're not. We're 60 points lower, which means there's starting to run into just overall resistance here. And if we do start taking out some of these resistance levels, then um, again, I think one of the most important ones to watch is going to be this yellow line as well as this um, level right here that's right at 1540. And, you know, it, it's funny as I look at this chart right now, I, it's almost like I could see, well, let me see, we come down, then we flag out a little bit here, and then we make another leg down. And maybe that's what the market is wanting to do. Finally, one more thing I want to show you. Just for the heck of it, let's create a parallel line. Since this was our last downtrend, let's see. Well, would you look there for what that's worth? And just for the heck of it, let's create a parallel line here, which, by the way, happens to be all these are parallel. Let's just put this guy right there. This is just for jollies. I've got no strong sense that, that if we come up to this line, uh, unless it coincides with tagging this blue line, I don't know, it might be interesting to see if, if we enter into about a four or five day period of selling down to the 1540 level. I think that would be a healthy thing um, for the markets. But if we do, we then need to be on the lookout for a potentially bearish pattern, which we'll talk about if and when we get there. So for right now, I'm looking at this as resistance. I'm looking at the 1540s as support. So let's see what happens if we get there. What, I mean, we're going to go one or the other. If we get down to 1540, let's see if we bounce up. If we get up to uh, 1560s, uh, mid-1560s tomorrow, let's see if we tag this or this blue line and then start to sell off again. And finally, I just want to remind you, my goal is not to tell you what to do. My goal is just to point out these chart features and you take my, my brand of of uh, analysis, or if you don't like it, my brand of nonsense. You take that and you wrap it up into your own thought processes. Take it or leave it. I'm not making any promises, but it is interesting how many times we see the same thing happen over and over again. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.